Are we being duped by the 2024 quarterback draft class? Marvin Harrison versus Malik Neighbors draft strategy, quarterback strategy for the Chargers, the Vikings, the Steelers, and tons more in the Peacock and Williamson mailbag. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. That's where most of the questions came from today. You can also drop a question in the YouTube comments and make sure you subscribe while you there while you are there like all of our beloved everydayers we appreciate you here with us every day locked on podcast network your team every day is what we do and don't forget to check out the podcast for your favorite team because it is covered no matter the sport here on the locked on podcast network today's mailbag episode is brought to you by FanDuel Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, we got some critiques from your mock draft 3.0 from yesterday, Matt. We'll get to those questions, but um, a draft-heavy mailbag, as it should be here as we sit in March and getting ready for the NFL draft. I want to start with a question about the quarterback class and, and seeing how The 2021 class, the 2022 class have gone. I mean, those drafts weren't that long ago. Those rookie contracts aren't even finished, Matt. And a grand total of two drafted quarterbacks are hits out of, what, uh, a dozen? Are you talking about 20 and 21 combined? 21 and 22 combined. We have Trevor Trevor Lawrence, who was the first pick in the draft. And then we have Brock Purdy, who was the last pick in the draft. And nobody else is good from those classes or nobody else is at least good enough to be a factor on the team that drafted them. Uh, That's where we're at with those two draft classes. So uh, I want to go to uh, a question here from Michael. And he says, how confident are you that the 2024 draft of quarterbacks aren't seeing the same as those classes like in 2021, just three years ago? It's a great story. It's a great conversation. And that is pretty remarkable that you can look at two entire draft classes that are that recent, 22 and 21, and only two of them, only two starters of the whole group as it stands right now. I mean, one for six in the first round, by the way. I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, One for six in the first round. Wow. Right. To kind of make an excuse, nobody had high hopes for 22, but everyone had massive high hopes for Trevor Lawrence's crew in 21. Now, if we go back one more year to 20, the first five all look like hits. Burrow, Tua, Herbert, Love, Hurts, you know. So maybe we're nitpicking, you know, specific stuff just to make this conversation. But if we concentrate just on 21, that feels a lot like this class to me. You know, I mean, three in a row to start the draft. That doesn't happen many times in history. And I think it's going to happen in this draft, if not four or four out of five a quote, transcendent quarterback, you know, in Lawrence versus Caleb Williams, and then some other questions, you know, but guys were pretty darn high on Fields and Jones and Lance and Wilson uh, this time before they were picked. And deep down, I mean, I don't know about you, but if we even include Knicks and Pinnix, so that there's six guys, I think, that are potential to be top 50 picks, since I included Hertz in somewhat of this conversation, I bet two are hits. I mean, I'm not even sure who, but I mean, I just think history shows probably two of the six will be starters four or five years from now. Which brings us to another conversation and yeah. a question about strategy here. And it's a fantastic question, I think, from James, who says, if you were the Steelers and the Vikings or other quarterback needy teams in the middle of the draft, would you choose a reclamation project or give up the draft capital to take a swing at a higher ceiling prospect in a higher ceiling rookie and it looks like the Steelers and the Vikings are two teams that are doing the opposite versions of that and so I think that's fascinating the Minnesota Vikings are prepping and we'll see if it happens but most people believe and you know it looks like they're trying to do something in the draft and move up and maybe get the third or fourth 
quarterback that goes in this class. While the Steelers are sitting at pick 20 and are have two quarterbacks with varying degrees of success in the NFL, one with still high upside, one that was an MVP candidate for a time and has won a Super Bowl in the league, got them both for what five million dollars in a conditional yeah. day three pick so they give up nothing and to be honest with you matt i don't know that their upside of those quarterbacks that they paid nearly nothing for with russell wilson combined with justin fields i don't, I don't even think it has less upside than whoever the vikings end up selecting in this draft and spending multiple first round picks on yeah, we could even include Darnold because they spent more for Darnold than the Steelers did for those two. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know, and so a couple things to unpeel here. I think if I were to bet, trying to be as impartial as possible, I bet the Steelers get better quarterback play than the Vikings this year. Just in a nutshell. Somehow, some way. Right. They have two chances and both guys already have experience. So a veteran quarterback is likely to play better in week one than a rookie, even a, a great future rookie, even mm -hmm. Peyton Manning. Now, I also do believe that the Vikings will end up with a first-round player, you know, McCarthy or May, most likely. <clears throat> now, I think the Steelers will probably have better quarterback play in 2024, but you might rather be the Vikings situation this time next year. Both things could be true. See what I'm saying? You know, like a promising rookie after right. one year. Yeah. You well, know? And that's the thing. So the Vikings next year at this, in 12 months, we could be talking about the Vikings like we talk about the Texans and CJ Stroud. We could be talking about the Vikings like we're talking about the Carolina Panthers, too. Right, 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 right. Exactly. It's, or probably somewhere in between is what history shows. I mean, it's probably yes. somewhere in between. He struggled or, you know, he's okay. Maybe he's going to get better in year two, you know. And the overall point is, I think in a lot of cases, it's worth it. You have to fully believe in the prospect. Um, I, 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 I have doubts, and this is where I didn't love what the 49ers did a few years ago, and I'm not sure I'm fully behind on what the Vikings are doing. Is that player you're getting who teams, who, who at some point, multiple teams, at least two teams, and that's if the, that's if the the Vikings get up to number three, at least two teams. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, if not, then three teams at least will have chosen a different quarterback than the guy you're about to spend multiple first-round picks on. Is that guy the the worth it? In some cases it is, uh, and, and we've seen, you know, trade-ups for Josh Allen. Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, and, and uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it hits. So it doesn't mean that the first quarterback is always the best quarterback, right? Um, so it's not a – you know – I just want to, I, I want to grade, and this is kind of where the whole draft conversation goes. I want to grade, I want to grade process over results. Like if Trey Lance hit mm -hmm. a few years ago, the results would have been good and everyone would be talking different about that move. But when they made the move, it was a, it was bad business. They traded too much too early right, right. and didn't even have conviction on which guy they were going to take at pick number three. That's good bad point. business, whether it works out or not. And it turns out it didn't work out for the 49ers there. And it turns out it didn't matter which quarterback they took. It might not have worked out. Uh, I think Fields would have looked better. I think Mac Jones would have looked better with the 49ers than just because of the surrounding talent than what happened with those two players. But Brock Purdy might be might have been better than both of them anyway. So um, that's that's kind of where I sit with this. It's like, okay, you, you better be pretty sure that you love this quarterback if he's going to be the fourth guy and you're trading two, maybe three first-round picks to go get him. Yeah, that's a great conversation too. Like even at the time going from three to two to take Mitch Trubisky was bad process. We could complain trading, you know, at, at the time, not knowing what Mahomes would turn into. Wow. Did they really need to trade up to get Mahomes? Was that smart or not? But if you turn into Mahomes, no one cares. I mean, no one has ever brought up in the last five years. Yeah, but, but they had to trade up to get them. You, you know, like nobody cares right. one bit it, it about was that. Three right. first round picks. It was two first round picks. Yeah. And it was a first round pick and one it ended up being two. Like the Chiefs ended up because they were a playoff team in in uh, in Mahomes' rookie year with Alex Smith at quarterback. So they ended up trading two picks that were at the in the 20s, right? I think so. They were a playoff team. They so, were from yeah. 20 to 10 yeah. in the draft, and their pick the next year was and even later. It was even a good one, too. Right. Yeah. So that's already much less than what the, the Vikings – in sure. fact, that's basically the Vikings pick at 11, period. 
True. Good point. Right? Good point. Yeah. So, so real quick to like Vikings versus Steelers. So even the owner came out and said, we're growing pretty weary of just making the playoffs and getting eliminated or barely making the playoffs. We aim for higher around here. Cam Hayward's not, you know, going to be here forever. Minka and Watt are getting up in age. You know, like we need to advance our timeline. We got to push our chips in a little bit more where I don't think the Vikings are in that scenario. I think with a new coach and they've been a good place the last couple of years that a quote rebuild makes more sense for them or tearing it down with a rookie quarterback makes more sense for that organization in their division, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I also don't know, I'm not saying yes or no. I'm not sure if the Steelers loved Wilson and Fields or if they just loved what they cost. You know what I mean? Like, if they're all equal, I don't know they'd be their picks. You know, I don't was, know. Uh, yeah, it was just playing the stock market. buying Right, it right. Time. Right. And, yeah, and I'm not sure the stock will hit, but I know it'll go up. I think the I think if you're if you're playing the stock market, I like the Steelers moves. They're more likely to benefit from what they've done at the mm -hmm. quarterback position than the Minnesota Vikings. But I understand the idea of for the swinging cost. For the, yeah, for the cost. And, and I understand dollar, the yeah. idea of swinging for the fences. But is JJ McCarthy that guy? Even if he hits, mm -hmm. does he hit at a level where you're going to go into Buffalo in in cold weather? in December, in January, in the playoffs. I know they're an the NFC team, but just stay right, with right, them. Right, right. <laughs> go win a football game, right? Is that how good even J.J. McCarthy could become if he is a hit? And so those are sort of the right. questions I have with it and the price you're paying to go get it. So you better love the guy. Um, I know we have to get the break, but if I were a GM, and I've changed my tune on this a little more over the years, and Kenny Pickett has something to do with it, I don't want to hit a double. I mean, if I'm going quarterback shopping in the draft, not free agency, not a trade, in the draft, I am swinging for the fences, and I'm going to be extremely patient with that guy in a Josh Allen-like manner. Yes, and it's But different. the Steelers did that a little bit with Fields. I mean, still Fields is a pretty good cut that maybe he is a home run. Wilson won't be. Fields is more physically gifted than maybe McCarthy, all the quarterbacks. In the draft. Right, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. All right, next. Let's talk Marvin Harrison not working out at Ohio State's pro day. Could he be overtaken by neighbors? And what about Max? What about Matt's mock draft of moving down for the Chargers? Is that the right move to make that move with maybe the Minnesota Vikings? All tying in together with these draft related questions, Matt. Coming up next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the Lombardi Trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance as well. We're talking superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights. Maybe you just need some new wiper blades. Whatever it is, if you're into speed, you're into power, you're into style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back there's a green check mark you know that part is going to fit your vehicle because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that w keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers All right, moving along in our conversation here, let's talk draft wide receivers. We, we talked quarterbacks a little bit there. And how about this wide receiver group? And Scott asked this question. Do you think not working out at all will hurt Marvin Harrison Jr.'s draft stock? And do you think Malik Neighbors could potentially take over Marvin Harrison Jr. as the top wide receiver if he's working out like crazy? And maybe through some scouts' eyes, Matt, the tape was close enough where you might end up feeling better in the end about neighbors because he checked more boxes in the pre-draft process. Also a really good question. And you are hearing more and more from the DJs and Kuipers, et cetera, that some teams even have neighbors ahead of Harrison on their boards. And this is a closer race than anyone thinks. And I can buy that. I mean, neighbors is unbelievable. I think he's a, a prospect, maybe even an A-plus prospect. I mean, I think Neighbors versus Jamar Chase is a conversation of what they were like coming out of LSU. I mean, he's a, a an elite prospect, and I don't throw that word around hardly at all. Yeah. Uh, can I just interrupt for a second? Please. I, I saw a, 
a comparison, a pro comp. And I love comps to kind of, you know, put in your mind what style a player is. It's never, yeah, yeah. Exactly, you know, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of things like, you know, faster Larry Fitzgerald for Marvin Harrison Jr., which is pretty good. Pretty damn awesome, right? Like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. as good as you can get uh, if yeah. you gave Larry Fitzgerald more speed and he's already a Hall of Fame guy, right? So that's pretty cool. A but more violent comp- Lawrence Taylor, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> And it's funny because we're getting comparisons to um, Caleb Williams is the next Patrick Mahomes, right? So, like, it was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a historic draft class with, like, you know, all Hall of Famers at the top. Yeah. Uh, He's a 6'5 awesome Aaron Donald. Like, right. oh, when, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, a, a lot of optimism in the offseason, and we know that half of these guys are actually not even going to be that good. Uh, you know, of course. Injuries, right. whatever it is, they go to the wrong place. It's it's a, it's a coin flip in the NFL mm-hmm. draft a lot of times. So the Malik Neighbors comp I saw is almost as eye-opening, maybe more eye-opening than faster Larry Fitzgerald. And it was uh, it was taller Steve Smith Sr. I think I heard that one too. Steve yeah. Smith was a monster. Pretty good, right. That's a Hall of Fame type guy. A Hall of Fame guy who, despite his lack of size, was, was a beast. You give him more size with his explosive ability? Like, that's crazy. So yeah. we've got taller Steve Smith. In Malik Neighbors, we've got faster Larry Fitzgerald in the draft. Uh, how does the team trade down from that, by the way? Which is another question coming another up. Question. As as the Neighbors versus Harrison. I don't think it hurts Harrison. If you love the if you love the tape, you love the player. But I do think Harrison's in a unique situation where maybe nobody else in this draft class could pull off what he's doing either. That's what I was going to say. I think he's the only one that could get away with this. You know, like. Everyone thinks Alt is the number one tackle, but if he decided he's not doing anything, I don't know he'd be the number one tackle. You know, I, mean, I don't know that Turner, the edge rusher from Bama, could be over verse and those guys if he decided to take this routine. Or I just think Harrison's that good. You know, by but, the way, uh, Caleb Williams is working out at USC's pro day, so he's throwing. No, okay, okay, he's doing stuff. Harrison's it's not just forty yard dash. Harrison's not doing anything. He didn't do medicals. He's not even doing football stuff. He, I think. I think Harrison and Caleb Williams are doing medicals, but just for those, just for the team visits, I think. Yeah. Not yep. the, the full. Medical. Right. I mean, you can't not do medicals. I mean, they're, they're selectively doing it. They didn't do it at the combine. If you are, uh, if you are, I don't know, a late first round, if you're lad McConkey and you're like, ah, not going to work out, not going to do medicals. Well, guess what? Instead of being a late first rounder, maybe you're a third round pick now. Right. That, that would affect yeah. you. Marvin yeah. Harrison. I don't think it's going to affect you. And so if you had neighbors ahead of Harrison, then you'd probably keep him there. But it's not going to affect Harrison. It would affect other players, I think. But the question about the like Chargers. Like Cooper DeGene right now. I mean, guys that can't oh, work out. Because the, And that's the big question, right? And I'm right. really interested. Uh, Alabama's doing their pro day as we're recording here. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Kool-Aid if he McKinstry, runs a mid-four right. fives, he's a first-round guy all day. If he runs four or five one, now we're talking about a second-round player. So it's mm-hmm. huge for someone like that. Um and yeah, Cooper DeGene, he he needs to work out as much as anybody. And I think he's going to be fast in a straight line. He jumps high, but I want to see those agility drills, you know? So a lot, of, it's a, it's a lot different for a lot of players and answer the question. No, I don't think it hurts Harrison, but you were taken to task on your mock draft. Matt, yeah. About, I'm ready to battle it we, out. We just talked about how good of a prospect Malik neighbors is. Is it worth it for the chargers to move down, even though they collect two first round picks from the Minnesota Vikings, like they did in your mock draft to move out of someone as good as neighbors to get maybe a guy who's a wide receiver two instead of a wide receiver one and a right tackle is right tackle plus another really good, but not as good wide receiver prospect. Is that worth it? Uh, That question comes from Michael. He's basically saying, I'm not sure a starting right tackle and a wide receiver two is enough to move out of neighbors at pick five. And to pull back the curtain, I, I, I knew I, I didn't finagle the draft to give the Chargers what I wanted them to have. You know, when I did a mock, I just picked them as I picked them and tried to do it as realistic as possible that, hey, if I'm the Chargers and saying yes to that deal, I'll roll the dice that what I'll get at those two spots. And if you didn't listen, first of all, shame on you. But they got Latham from Alabama, a right tackle that I adore, to be honest with you, and neighbor's teammate, Thomas, the, the other receiver. To me, if I were the Chargers, I would rather have those two. If I, if I understand the question. I mean, Neighbors is that great. I mean, I, I really do think he is that great. But considering the the scarcity of tackles and pretty much knowing I was going to get a tackle with one of those two picks, that made it an easy decision for me from the Chargers standpoint. 
and you know, change the names if you want, but you mm-hmm. know you're going to have an opportunity at a really good tackle at 11. And if something happens right, where right. the top, you're, like let's say your top three tackles, if you're the Chargers, aren't there at 11, well, that means Odunze's there probably, right? And that means you know somebody mm-hmm. else is there. Yeah, right. And, and so uh, I like the trade for the, and I'm generally a trade down guy. Me too. Anyway, and let's be honest, it's very unlikely that Malik Neighbors is taller Steve Smith. And it's very unlikely that Marvin Harrison yeah. is faster Larry Fitzgerald. So let's get that out there, too. Right, right, right. So, yeah, I mean, considering how the Chargers are built, their cap issues, their team needs, I would rather have two A minuses than an A or two B pluses than an A, especially because tackles don't grow on trees. Wide receivers kind of grow on trees. Yeah. And they're building a new thing in, in L.A. And they need I, I think they need two really good players more than they need one coin flip. Yes, especially to help Herbert. We ask Herbert, who would he rather have, Thomas and Latham or Adunze? He might say Adunze, but I don't think he would. Next, let's talk. Brandon Ayuk is a trade to the Pittsburgh Steelers imminent and more from the Peacock and Williamson mailbag. This episode of PNW is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say goodbye to those busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or the one seat. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's right, 200 bucks extra to play with. Use it on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to uh, win it all in the tourney. 200 bucks, and all you got to do is win your first $5 bet. And visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. NFL draft props as well at FanDuel. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on. What are you hearing? You're plugged in, Matt. You're in the Pittsburgh area. You 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 tiptoe around the building there, right? Mm-hmm. I was there um, yesterday. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk actually tweeted at Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin yesterday. I saw that. And he's saying, Hey coach, uh some folks say we look like twins. And you know what's funny is he does Brandon Ayuk does look a lot like young Mike Tomlin if he had a whole bunch of hair. It is pretty phenomenal. So uh, is that Brandon Ayuk having fun? Is Brandon Ayuk does he want out? What are you hearing right now? Could we see, and, and as we talked about yesterday when some of these rumors started to pop up, clearly the 49ers are at some point, I think, willing to listen to offers. And they listened to offers on Debo Samuel a couple years ago, if you remember that offseason. And, you know, it's going to be hard for the 49ers to pay two 25-plus million dollar wide receivers. And they already got one in, in Debo. So it's either Debo goes next year or Ayuk goes this year. That's the way I look at it for the 49ers. So they're going to listen. Are they going to get what they're asking? I don't know. What do you think they're asking, Matt? Do you think Ayuk to the Steelers um, is heating up right now? I do. And I think a big catalyst was Mike Williams canceling his visit to Pittsburgh and signing with the Jets, which happened yesterday. I do think Steelers Ayuk talk has been going for a while now. And my hunch is the sticking point would be what kind of extension are you going to give him? You know, you've never even had the guy on the team. I mean, that's a tough extension to give. Um. As we record this a little afternoon on Wednesday, people in the know think they're in the know, kind of in the know, have been to the building, seem to think that this is happening very soon, that this is heating up in a big, big way. No one that I trust that I know is in the know (laughs) has told me that, though. You know, I mean, there's two or three of those people that I would say, oh, this is happening, and those have not said yes yet. And by, and by the way, Matt, you sent me a text last week that, mm-hmm. that maybe the Steelers had called about Devo as well, right? Yeah, but then you said the dead money's so big. Uh, that that yeah. doesn't add up. Uh, Devo's not getting traded before June yeah. 1st. Uh, I don't think. It just doesn't make sense cap-wise for the 49ers, unless they get a crazy haul and the team loves Devo so much more than IU that they force the 49ers' hands. They would save some cap. It's like $21 million of dead money. It's just the port, It's the part of the contract that it's not the year to get out. That's why I always say mm-hmm. next year is the year. And if you're trading Debo on June 1st, you can't use those picks anyways yet because it's next year's draft picks. So why not trade him next offseason, right? So that's that's why I think that's happening with Debo. If a trade happens now, it's probably Brandon Ayuk. I love the fit for the Steelers, by the way. Oh, I think, wow, I think wow, this wow, combination yeah. with George Pickens on the other side is perfect. A little bit more of the intermediate 
short guy can give you some yak can give you a little bit of everything with uh and, and play a little bit more of a z role and you know he could be an x or a z in the nfl iu can mm-hmm. so you know scheme diversity fits with just about any team he'll block down the field i think you know his attitude fits with what the pittsburgh steelers do so interesting fit and i like it uh, you would have to pony up pick 20 in the draft i think that, that's for sure what the 49ers are asking they were rumored to tell the the uh, jaguars that they wanted pick 17 plus zay jones for brandon iu and that trade hasn't happened yet. So uh, I think the Niners are listening to offers, but is a team going to pony up with a top 20 draft pick is the question. And do you think the Steelers would or should? 20 would be off the table for me. Yeah, And I, I don't know if they agree with that or not. I mean, if I'm the GM of the Steelers, let's have a talk, but I'm taking a tackle at 20 and that's more important to me. I can find a receiver in round two, whatever. And I love Ayuk, but as a rule of thumb, you usually lose the trades that you give up a lot and you have to sign the player. It's just you know, a double whammy. I mean, it, Khalil Mack, Jamal Adams, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it, but there is a price. I mean, things I've heard, which I don't believe, are the Steelers have two third round picks. That would be the compensation, two thirds. You'd probably roll your eyes at be like, get the heck out of here. I'm not doing right. that, you know? And, and what's funny is we might be hearing about conversations that happened last week. Because that oh, might have yeah, been a conversation. Yeah, yeah. It might have been. Uh, this is what we you know, can do, you know. Right, John Lynch answers the phone. Like we can play this out, right? So, you're Steelers. I'm the 49ers, right? You right. Ring me up, and I'm like, oh hey, Matt, what, what what's going on? Uh, good, good job getting the, uh, good job getting Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, you know. Yeah. And you say <laughs> what? Bet, right. You say what to me? And I'm John Lynch. So. I'm really interested in Brandon, John, but I can't give you 20. Can we talk beyond that? Are we hanging up right now? And what I was going to say before is deep down, maybe the two teams could compromise on the Steelers next year's first. And my response to John Lynch would be like, I understand where you're at, but uh, we're we're in a Super Bowl window right now. Mm -hmm. And this is a player we want to resign and we want to keep, and he is still under contract. So it would take 20 and the – and we need a veteran player because we're trying to win right now. So mm-hmm. drafting a, a a wide receiver, even if it was at pick 20, might not be ready for us to help win like Brandon Ayuk would. So he's not as good as Ayuk, it's gonna be yeah, Brian so, Thomas or something. I understand right, where right. you're at. You know, if you wanna if you want to start talking about pick 20, give us a call before the draft. I think that's probably how the conversation would go. And that's maybe what the conversation already was. And we're hearing about it now, and they've already talked and realized that compensation's not gonna be close enough. It could be. It absolutely could be. I mean, or how about this? The Pittsburgh Steelers, once they are on the clock at 20, they thought uh, Brian Thomas gonna Jr. Be was going right, to be there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. not. And so they're like, yeah, you know what? Actually, the best thing for us now would we'll be to actually go trade for Brandon Ayuk. And you've already mm-hmm. had those conversations. You know what? You know, so it's an A.J. Brown trade. It's a Stephon Diggs type trade. And we have seen those work out for the, the team that was buying, especially a wide receiver. It has worked out with those teams buying and signing a player to a new contract. That's true. That's true. Um, I do believe that there's a little bit of urgency because the only guys of consequence are Calvin Austin and George Pickens at the wide receiver position. So I think they will add some veteran before the draft. I oh, mean, Calvin Austin, the 49ers could really use Calvin Austin, by the way. Oh, you can and have him. Can have former Steeler Ray Ray McLeod, uh, who was their main. He could do turn. that. He so, could do that for you. Yeah. Return guy. So still here's a weird. 20. Still need 20. <laughs> still need 20. Here's a weird three-way, because I don't think the Steelers can get Higgins. What if somehow that, that doesn't help you guys, because then you got to pay him anyways. You might as well keep Ayuk. Yeah, right. Oh, That doesn't I, help, yeah. So that's to, I because I was about to bring that up, and I didn't even put the, the divisional thing together. Which, I with can't why, imagine that. Would because happen. I think that would be a better fit cost-wise, because you could probably yeah. get Higgins for less than Ayuk in trade. I'd say I'll give you my two for Higgins. Right, if, we, and if we're really to do it in division, a, a conditional thing where if he goes off this year, you end up getting another fourth or fifth mm-hmm. or something like that to make him feel better, like they got closer to first round value. If that's what they're asking, um, and I could potentially see maybe the 49ers say, okay, you know, next year's first, and something could potentially get it done if the, if they one of the thirds. Or... I don't know that the 49ers don't believe they can sign Brandon Ayuk. I, I think that's the question. And, and the if 49ers, they don't, they're going to get a third round pick for him next year. Right, I mean, well, you're going to get a third round comp, right? Yeah, or they just tag him too. Or they, they just tag him. They just do the thing that the Bengals are doing right now. Would it be worth mm-hmm. it for the 49ers to say, we're going to play this out and we'll just tag Brandon Ayuk next year? And if we get a two next year instead of a one this year, that's okay because we're trying to win a Super Bowl right now. 
And that gives you two years of IU Super Bowl window. Yes. And you were just there. I mean, you're, you're probably you're the favorite in the NFC anyway. Mm-hmm. Just throwing this out there. I don't know if there's any truth to it or, either, but the other names that have been thrown around for the Steelers are Stefan Diggs. And sounds like he could be had much cheaper at his cost and age. And Terry McLaurin. Uh, I'm not sure why Washington would deal him, but they are just cleaning house. I like McLaurin. I, I, I love him. McLaurin. We, I think we even talked about him a little bit at the trade deadline when when uh, the commanders were sending people off. I could absolutely see that one because they do have. It'd be uh, a perfect yeah. fit here. Yeah. Uh, they have a younger wide receiver mm-hmm. drafted in the first round that they're going to have to pay eventually. They got a ton of picks. They could draft two of them. Although they have the cap space. They don't need to move on from anybody. And they need to build that nest for the quarterback they're about to draft it to. So agreed. Agreed. I can see both sides on them wanting to deal McLaurin, you know. But you know, when it comes to rumors and you put things together and you look at needs and you look at value and you look at things, I do think 49ers, Steelers, Brandon IU does line up in a way that I believe that. Th- there's conversations happening about that. And I, I think there's a back and forth. Yeah. Need a wide receiver. And whether the phone call went like we thought it did, maybe it was short and like, uh, oh no, that's where we're not giving up 20. And then I was like, we have to give up 20. All right, thanks. We'll talk to you later. It could yeah, be yeah. that conversation. Might be it. But it, I'm, it seems to be heating up today, though, for some reason. I'm positive that conversation happens. And if it got past that and they agreed on compensation, well, that's where the agents come in. And maybe that's where you're hearing more because maybe the agent's like, hey, we're. We're we're banging out a contract now with Brandon, mm-hmm. yeah, right. which also won't happen overnight, you know. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. So, and if it does happen and it's not pick twenty, I believe it would be first down, first round value. So it would probably be a two plus a future thing or a next year's first, you know, something like that. Yeah, I'm hoping tomorrow we've one to talk about though. Could be could be it in could the works. Yeah, could be fun. Um, a lot going on in the NFL. It never That's sleeps. Usual. I love the rumor mill. I love the NFL draft. Matt and I are here for you every day, breaking all of it down. And we'll be back again tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Talk to you then.